So today we are responding to a comment on our Touch Designer Stream Timeline Replicator and Comps video where we build a replicator system that can play forward and back video footage based on whatever you're selecting. And the comment relates to not being able to play audio files in reverse when you reverse the timeline. Uh, in the actual video I use GIFs so we never encounter audio at all but it's a good question so I thought I'd cover it. Now to explore the problem, if I uh, bring in, I've made a video for this demonstration that is just blank white, but if I add a audio file or audio movie I should say, you can see that it has some audio attached to it and if we listen to it, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's just me counting uh, from 0 to 10. But now with it playing, if I was to pause or and reverse my timeline, you can see that the audio stops cooking. Touch Designer don't like you playing audio in reverse, so they disable it when a chop is or a chop is dealing with audio and you reverse the timeline it stops you being able to cook audio on that specific chop so one of the mains or the, the only solution i could find in a relatively quick time was to use a movie file an audio file in chop link it to the same file that we brought in so in here i'm just going to do operator movie file in one Dot par dot file, and this will link to the exact same file. If we play it, you can see it plays the audio. What I'm also going to need to do is lock both of these to the timeline. So now if you play it forward, you can see it plays forward, but with an audio file that's locked to the timeline, it will not cook the frame. So instead of locking it to the timeline, what we can do is we can specify an index. And the index we specify is going to be the timeline. We're just going to trick touch designer. So if I do me.time.frame, no, oh, time, sorry, and then in here I do me.time.frame, I get the current index down here. Now, like we did in the original video, I'm going to have a look at how long this is. So it is 134 at 30 frames per second, which means it is actually 100. 68 frames long, so I'm going to change the time into that. So I'm going to do 168. So now my audio should loop perfectly. And the index I'm going to link it to is instead of me.time.frame, I'm going to say operator constant one time. And I'm actually going to attach a null here just so I don't need to type out constant one a lot. So now if I was to connect this up, I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Great. 6, so 7, 8, Great, so it's still counting, and it's still counting at the correct rate. But the problem is, is now that I still can't reverse the timeline because the audio file will stop cooking. So what we need to do is instead of our timeline or buttons controlling our actual timeline, what we need to do is we need to start manipulating this value, which is going to be our, our fake timeline per se. So let's say that I added a button to control the playback. So let's say uh, if we add this to a null. So when this is clicked, it's going backwards. When it's unclicked, it's going forwards. So what we need to be able to do is invert this number based on the timeline. And to do that, I'm going to add another value that is length, and I'm going to get my me.time.end, which is going to get the range of my current timeline. So now, if I pass this value, it's counting up. But if I subtract my current timeline away from my uh, length of my timeline, so if I do combine chops by subtract, what I'll get is the invert of that. And it's a timeline that's playing backwards. But if we pass it into the index value of our audio chop, it doesn't, the timeline is still playing forward, so it'll still cook, but this will allow it to render backwards in its memory. 
So if we connect it up, uh, and then I change, so you can see that the way the maths work, it changes the name from length to time. So I'm just gonna do rename and time. So now that's cooking. If I plug it in, so I'm not an expert, but that definitely sounds like someone counting backwards to me. Uh, what we want to do is then use this as the switch to change between our. Oh, sorry, change between our values. So if I add the button in. It's currently playing forward, backwards, and if we add the original one back in, so we now have, when it's one, it's playing forwards, when it's zero, it's playing backwards. And if I connect that up, and you do is no, less than eight, and the rest is, yeah, for all three, you do is no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, less than eight, and the rest is, yeah, for all three, you do is no, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. seven, eight, nine, ten, no. Less, two, three, four. So there are a few issues with that that I'm not really going to go into this video because the idea was just to get audio playing backwards as quickly as we could. Yeah, I'm going to disconnect that and leave it playing. So what happens is if you compare the two values, so if we look at the... Uh, this is the counting down and this is the counting up value here. You can see that they're inverse of each other. So basically, because we're taking one value away from each other, they, they go down in a non-linear scale. So when you invert the timeline, you actually jump to the other end of the countdown. So if we are 60 frames in and saying one and then flip it, we're actually going to go to being saying nine backwards because of the way that this maths works. So you could solve it by adding a different, instead of having a switch, you add a gate that basically misses out this maths, that would avoid it. But the, the other easiest way to really do it is just take your audio out of here and use the timeline backwards. So if I was to create a new, take this constant here and pass it to the out, so we're literally passing out the current value of the timeline, I'm then gonna take uh, the audio file out, up a level and paste it and I'm going to link it down uh, into, sorry, it's project one. So now it's still linking to the timeline of this node. I'm going to connect it to the null. Uh, so it is, oh, I didn't need to do that at all. It's this part I want to do, project once. So it's still connecting to the same file inside this container, but it's referencing this null as the timeline. Now, if I reverse the timeline, it stops it playing because we only have one master. But if I add a new time component to this one, I then make it run independently, solo it and set it to that length that we discussed earlier. So now this timeline runs on its own versus the timeline that is running on the master touch designer level. So now I can reverse the timeline and we can see that it starts counting down but this audio file continues to play. Uh, this is actually a really good method because it's not normally recommended to have more than one audio file out. So in the replicator example, what I would do is I would have each replicator has an audio file out that connects to a switch, similar to the way that we do with the click button. So when you click uh, an icon to change the video, you also change the audio switch. And that way, when you control the timeline, it will allow you to play it forward and back. And just to verify for you that this is working, if I connect that up. Less than eight, and the rest is yeah. For all three, you do is no. One, two, three, four, five. For all four, five, six. Yeah. For all four, five, six. And the one thing that allows us to solve is it now means that the timeline is continuous, so that when you reverse it and play it, it's like you're scrubbing rather than it jumping around randomly. So a fairly simple thing to implement, it just means that you need to get the current timeline value out of your index and have your audio files running independently from inside their container. Uh, so it is a bit fiddly, uh, but hopefully that's enough for you to go on. The cracking and popping you're here is going to be due to with the, the, basically the timeline buffer that works inside, or the audio buffer inside Touch Designer. You can play about with changing the length of these, but it's normally going to come down to Again, the fact that it's not designed to play things backwards. You may need to look at like lookup tables to load previous values before you load play them. So 
uh, if you think about when you play a video it's already pre-preparing the next frames so that it doesn't skip when we play them backwards it's not ready to do that and the same applies to audio but it just has a lot more frames per second so it's very hard for the computer to be prepared it's, it's not used to load things in that order especially with the uh, codecs that we use to save them uh, but hopefully that gets you started thank you very much <laughs>